And we're live. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Breakthrough Guitar Q&A Live. Thank you so much for joining us. If there's any of you guys that are joining us live, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Uh, welcome to the Breakthrough Guitar channel. My my name is Brock. This is Jonathan Boyd. That way. Yeah. What's up, Jonathan? <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm good, Brock. Doing really good, man. We um, I know I'm still in the show pretty early, really quick, but we just launched um, our program, Teaching Earn, where we're actually teaching people how to uh, start their own guitar teaching businesses. And man, that's going so well. It's so exciting. Uh, yeah, just awesome. people are loving it. They're they're lighting up. It's, it's amazing. Anyway, I'm just excited about that. So, Yeah, that's amazing. I don't think a lot of people realize that they can, I mean, you can, you, if you have this skill of learning, playing guitar, you can easily teach it to other people, pass it on, right? That's a, that's something that's exactly. really cool. So I think that's really cool that you're doing that. And we are going to jump into some questions. Uh, well, I will say at the beginning, uh, if you are not already subscribed to this channel, definitely subscribe to this channel. We're pumping out some really awesome content. I think you guys would really like it. Some backing tracks, some Q&As like this. We're, uh, some really good stuff, some quick little tutorials and tips and YouTube shorts and all that. So, But we're also on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. And if you want to jump in our course, there should be a link in the description where we teach you how to – we just help you how, discover how to play guitar by feel. So definitely check that out. And let's – jump into some questions you ready for some jonathan let's do it all Talk right again, baby come on all right so <laughs> first question and this is from a, probably from a new guitar player uh how much will i need to practice my guitar each day what do you think jonathan so look that's a good question i mean it's it's probably one of the most common questions that there is um and as usual like the answer is uh, how much should you practice each day well what do you want to be able to do? It, it depends. I mean, nobody can prescribe you a, a, an amount of time to practice or if you actually, there's a lot of teachers out there uh, that will say you need to practice 30 minutes a day or you need to practice four hours a day or you need to practice, you know, an hour a day or something like that. And the truth is you don't need to do anything. You, you should really, in my opinion, you do what you want to do. It, do you want to get better? Well, you're not going to get better if you don't practice, right? So like, there are very few things that you can just learn about and get better mentally without actually physically picking up your guitar and doing it because playing guitar is a physical thing. You have to do it. And the only way to get better at it is to do it more specifically and do uh, doing it in the right ways. So again, going back to the original question, how much you should you practice? I think a better question is what are my goals? What do I want to do on guitar? You should determine that first and determine, you know, how much time maybe do you have, when do you want to reach that goal? And that will tell you how much do you need to practice. Um, and, and in terms of, you know, how long is it going to take to be able to reach X goal with guitar? Again, the answer is it depends. It depends on what that goal is. It depends on who you are. It depends on how fast you can dedicate yourself to learning something particular. It depends on the specific skill, whether you're trying to learn chord changes or you're trying to learn fast arpeggios or something like that. It, it all just depends. But again, the, the, the basic idea here is that instead of asking how much should I practice because that's just like getting in your car and driving around aimlessly how much how long should I drive Brock every single day how long should I drive I don't know where you want to go right so if you just want to go to your local grocery store you probably just have to drive 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something like that but if you want to drive to you know the next if you live in the United States if you want to live drive to the next state or you know, several states away, probably gonna have to drive a long time. So again, the point is, how long, how long should you practice each day? The, the real question is, what do you wanna do? And when do you wanna do it by? And that'll give you a lot better idea of how much you should actually be putting into it. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, <laughs> uh, simply, so. <laughs> you know, it's, it's simple. It, it really is simple that, I mean, it, it all, it's all relative to what your goals are. That absolutely makes sense. So, all right. Next question. What common beginner's mistakes should I avoid? Man. Okay. Beginner's mistakes. There are a really long laundry list of beginner's mistakes, but I'm going to try to boil down a few that come to mind uh, at the moment. The first thing is, I would say today's day and age is uh, we would think that it's the easiest to learn guitar because there's so many YouTube videos, there's so many books, there's so many things out there that you can, you know, that you can learn from. Uh, but really, ironically, the opposite is true. The more choices you have and the more input there is and the more 
stuff there is out there for you to learn. Actually, what happens is the more complex it gets, the more complicated it gets, the, the harder it is for you to know and see the path forward. And if you're a beginner, well, you don't know what you don't know, right? And also you don't know the path. So if you don't know the path and you have a zillion choices, what are the chances that you're going to go down the wrong path? It's almost guaranteed, you know? I mean, I, I've personally never seen anybody who picked up a guitar for the very first time and figured it all out by themselves. I don't think that's possible today in today's day and age. There's a myth that some people are self-taught. And I'm sorry, but there's no such thing as being self-taught. You learn something from someone, whether it's watching, whether it's formal lessons, whether it's listening to records and figuring something out, you're learning something from another source. You don't sit down and figure it out. So that's just, that's a myth. That's not even possible. Um, but as far as beginner mistakes, again, I would say the number one is thinking that you can figure it all out yourself. I'm sorry, you're just not going to. Like, there's just so many variables. It's so complex. There's so many different things that you can get wrong and only a few ways to get things right. And you need to be able to get those things right over and over and over and over again in order to know where to go and what you're doing and actually see progress. It's kind of like this. If you were to go into a kitchen full of, of food and ingredients and spices and all those kind of things, and you've never cooked before in your life, and somebody says, okay, I want you to bake me a cake, you have absolutely no idea how to bake a cake. You can look in the pantry. There's a bunch of ingredients. You can assume you can just grab some flour. Maybe that will work. I don't know. You can grab some, let's grab some oil. I don't know. I, oh, I've heard my grandmother said something about putting eggs in the cake before, so maybe I should grab some eggs. But I mean, how are you going to get from a kitchen full of ingredients to a finished cake? And figuring all those steps and all those little things out, what temperature the oven should be, how long you should put it on, whether you should even put it in the oven or the microwave or the toaster oven or whatever on the stove. There's just no way to figure that out. So anyway, the point is um, I'm trying to over-exaggerate. It's not exaggerated, but I'm trying to overemphasize the point that you're not going to figure it out on your own. The number one thing you can do to avoid that mistake, which that mistake will cost you some people that cost, honestly, their whole lives of trying to figure out the guitar and then they always want to be able to play the guitar. But if they never get proper guidance, proper structure from somebody who knows what they're talking about and has successfully helped other students, they're, they're just walking around in the dark and, and they're not going to figure it out. They're going to be frustrated. You might put the guitar down. In fact, um, I read an article the other day that said the, C, the CEO of Fender, they did a bunch of research and they found that literally nine out of 10 people quit playing guitar within the first 12 months. Nine out of 10 people. Why? It's not because they can't do it. It's not because they don't have the talent. It's not because they're age. It's not because their fingers are too stiff. It's not because of any of that stuff. It's just because they don't know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and when to move on. That's it. It's that simple, right? So that's, that's honestly, I would say there's a lot of mistakes that you can make as a beginner, but if you solve that one thing, everything else will take care of itself. Yeah, that's good. So actually, so I had a, a, a question that was going to come up later, but I feel like it's a good time to ask now. So is YouTube a good way to learn how to play guitar? Okay, so this is similar to the question of how much should I practice? Is YouTube a good way to learn guitar? Well, let me ask you this. That's like asking, is a book a good way to learn information? <laughs> it depends. If you're trying to learn how to build a house and you pick up a book about the history of railroads, that's useless, right? And the thing is, there are so many, I mean, there are, I know there are millions of YouTube videos. I, I imagine there's billions of YouTube videos. And that's so many videos that you couldn't even, if you, even if you watched, you know, one video per day, excuse me, one video per hour for your entire life, you'd never even get to half of them, right? And the chances of you watching the right YouTube videos and, and knowing exactly what path you need to go down, uh, first of all, knowing what your guitar playing goal is, but also knowing what is the path to get there? What's, what should I learn and in what order and how long should I practice it? How long should I move? How long should I do that thing in order to get to the goal that I'm, I'm trying to achieve on guitar to play whatever it is that I'm trying to play? How do you know those steps? 
if you're just trying to do it yourself, you don't. You don't know what you don't know. And that's why YouTube is such a dangerous rabbit hole. And that's why so many people get stuck on there because you, well, they get stuck and, and frustrated at the treadmill. So, you, you know, you get ex uh, inspired about something, you go to YouTube, you're, you're really serious about learning. And then guess what? You bounce around from thing to thing. And before you know it, you end up on some crazy video about some teacher showing off or whatever it is. And you get fed up and you get tired of it. You get frustrated. You put the guitar down and then you feel really bad because you really wanted to play you have the you have the ambition you have the the spark you have the you actually have the ability to do it it's just that going to youtube and trying to find your way around is literally like it it's pretty much impossible it's just not going to happen unless you have somebody telling you exactly what you should learn when you should learn it how long you should do it how you should do it when to move on etc it's just not going to happen so going back to the question is youtube a good way to learn guitar well it depends do you know exactly what you need to learn do you know exactly who you need to learn it from? Do you know exactly, even if you know a category of thing that you want to learn about, for example, let's say you want to learn, um, I don't know, pentatonic scale, for example. There's 800 million zillion videos on the pentatonic scale on YouTube. And how do you know if one teacher's way of doing it is actually going to be the right way for you in the long run, even if you understand what they're saying on that video? Maybe you can move your fingers and do what they're saying, but how are you going to know if that's not setting you up to get stuck later? That That's usually what happens. Most people never realize they're climbing up the wrong ladder. It seems like they're getting closer because they're learning more and more stuff, but they're actually just spinning their wheels. They're not getting anywhere. It's just driving around in circles, right? So anyway, again, is YouTube a good source to, to learn guitar, or watch videos or whatever? It depends. If you know exactly what you're looking for, if you know exactly what you want to improve, if you know exactly what particular song you want to learn and what part of it or something like that, sure, it can be a great resource. Otherwise, if you don't have all the guidance, the structure that you need, if you don't know exactly what you're doing, if you don't know exactly where you're going, if you don't know exactly where your goals are and how you should get there, then it can be an extremely dangerous tool. And I would say that Given the statistic that um, you know the CEO of Fender said that nine out of ten guitar players quit within the first twelve months, I'd say it's a pretty dangerous tool for most people. Yeah, I agree. I think that when it comes to like learning, like a like if there's one thing you want to learn, like say mm -hmm. you just want to learn a part of a song, or you want to learn a, a specific technique from a certain person that's teaching. I think that's it's helpful, but without sure. like a structure, like if you're trying to learn the guitar as a whole. It, it it's almost there's too many shiny objects that you can get lost go down a rabbit hole forever and never really see the progress that you want unless there's like yeah. something that's really really structured really well online so for sure those are my thoughts those are my thoughts all right next question all right um this person asked uh how do you recommend i should rehearse with a metronome if at all how should a person rehearse with a metronome Yes. That's essentially the question here. Yeah, if, if at well, all. If, should they do it or not? Should, yeah, and if so, how? Yeah, yeah. so this is my opinion, of course. Um, and this is just based on seeing results and understanding how to get students' results, right? You can do whatever you want. If you want to practice with a metronome, go for it. If you don't want to practice with a metronome, I can't make you. But here's why it can be useful, okay? What it, first of all, what is a metronome? A metronome is a device that keeps a rhythm, a steady rhythm. The purpose of a metronome is to get your body to feel a certain rhythm or to stay on the beat, right? And then it can also be used to help you increase your speed over time by turning up the, the speed of the beat, basically, which most people call it, you know, beats per minute, or at least measure it in beats per minute. Now, I mean, should you practice with one or not? First of all, it depends on what it is that you're trying to practice. If I have to give a general answer about this, I would say that if you're playing something where you're specifically practicing rhythm, like maybe practicing with the chords, chord changes, and maybe you're doing like a certain beat, uh, just get, just to give an example, G chord to let's say a D chord. And if I have a metronome that is a constant click like this, and I'm trying to get my timing down on changing chords like that, then it absolutely can be useful, right? And if I'm trying to also improve my chord changes as an example, and I turn the speed of the beat up, I make it faster like this, it can help me with my speed and with my chord changes. So 
or faster. So yeah, it can definitely help with that. And once you increase your speed like that with a metronome, then all the speeds below that is free play. Like you, you can play in any, any of those speeds that you want. You have free range at that point. Now, here's something else to consider that most people never talk about. In fact, I've, I've literally never seen anybody or even heard anybody talk about this specific thing right here. You want to develop your body's internal metronome. So practicing with a metronome is good. But eventually, when you play, when you pick up the guitar, I always say I never practice. I literally, I can't, it's been years since I practiced guitar. Why do I say that? Because I never practice. I only play the guitar. And what I mean is I pick it up and if there's something I want to improve or something I want to do, I always have, um, I always have a, a beat internally. And I, I mean, I don't know what it could be, like a uh, simple chord change, for example. Like if I want to play this chord, which is an A bar chord, to this D bar chord, it doesn't matter what chords, I'm just making something up. But if I want to, uh, maybe I'm trying to come up with a cool strumming pattern or something like that for a song. And if I can feel this rhythm myself in my body, I'm listening to it right now. It's in my head. I'm feeling it. You can't hear it, but it's in here. And that's what you have to get to. You have to get to the point where every time you practice, no matter what you're practicing, you're feeling the beat, right? So it, a metronome is kind of like training wheels. You want to use it at first so you can ride the bike. But once you got it, take the training wheels off. So now if I'm trying to come up with something, I'm just going to make this up, right? I don't know what I'm about to play. I don't know what the rhythm is about to be like, but I'm just going to try to feel it. So I have my internal metronome. You can see me bobbing my head. It's probably annoying by now, but just listen. So I have no idea what I was about to do, right? I'm just going along with that beat. And you can do the same thing with um, uh, lead notes. Like if you just play one note at a time, if you're trying to play a solo or scales or whatever it is, you can do the same thing with two notes. This one, that one. So this is my metronome. It may not sound very great, but my point is I'm just demonstrating that I'm playing along with that internal rhythm. So anyway, all in all, should you play with a metronome? Is it useful? When should you play with it? Yes, it can be useful. Use a metronome like training wheels to help you lock into the rhythm, whether you're practicing certain things that need to stay on beat, like practicing your chord changes or increasing your speed. But eventually you want to remove the metronome because it's like training wheels. You want to remove the training wheels and have that internal rhythm. You want to develop your internal sense of rhythm. And last thing I'll say is that just because you take the training wheels off, doesn't mean you're never going to put them back on. There's a lot more scenarios in playing music than there is in riding a bike. Riding a bike, all it is is you're either riding or you're not, more or less. And when you when you learn how to ride a bike in balance without the training wheels, you don't really need training wheels anymore. In music, there's a bunch of different types of scenarios, like different types of rhythm or different types of, let's say you're playing like an arpeggio or you're playing chord changes or whatever it is. You can use a metronome to get you started in any of those areas, and then eventually you can progress to where you don't need the training wheels anymore. Make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I could say that for, for those of you guys that aren't used to playing with a band or playing with other musicians like a drummer, um, and say you have a gig coming up where you're about to play with some, I would say that putting on a metronome at that time uh, would be really, really good because – Sometimes you get so used to you hit, you hit the chorus of a song and you start speeding up and you don't realize mm -hmm. it until you start playing with the band and then they're trying to get you to slow down or whatever it may be. That's probably a good one. One good use case, but totally. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, the, I saw I thought I saw this, this question. This next question I thought was pretty funny. So I'm going to ask it. <laughs> Why do guitarists make faces when they're playing? OK, that's a great question. Why do guitar players make guitar faces? Yeah, and, and also. My, I want to yep. see what your what your guitar face is if you if you make one. So. Okay, okay. So again, that the answer to that is it depends. But okay. why do, why to why do guitar players make guitar faces? Some people call them lemon faces. We see like especially blues players, right? When they're really in the zone and they're they're like BB King, like or, or, or crazy faces, right? Um, why do they do that? Well, my answer is probably going to be a lot deeper than any of you were expecting, but this is my answer. When you are playing music, specifically when you're improvising, 
or playing a solo. You aren't generating the music. It's actually coming through you. You are receiving it and then it's going through your guitar. Okay, so essentially you are like a radio and tuning in literally means like tuning the dial to where the signal comes through. What do I mean by the signal? The signal is the music in your head. The music that, where does it come from? I don't know, but it comes into your head from somewhere. You're receiving that signal and you're, you're playing it in real time on your guitar, right? And this can happen whether you're playing a song that you already know or whether you're improvising it happens more when you're improvising and you're trying to access that signal. So just like on your car, uh, if you're in your car or any radio, when you're dialing in the signal, you're going to a certain frequency, what we're trying to do is tap into that place where we're receiving that signal, okay? And the reason that people make guitar faces, and it sounds really weird, I understand that, but the reason that people make guitar faces is actually because those faces, those weird contortions and all the stuff they do actually helps them receive more of the signal. They're opening up the hole basically to where that signal can flow through more and it is flowing out through them. So music flows through you. It doesn't, you don't generate it. It doesn't come from you. It comes through you. And the, the, again, like people like Eric Clapton, BB King, all the great like blues guitar players, uh, the people that play with a lot of soul, watch those guys and think about what I just said about them accessing that, that sound, right? Or accessing, the, it's not that sound, it's that feeling. They're trying to access the feeling and they're singing it through their guitar. That's what they're doing. And I know this, again, I know this sounds really, really weird, but those faces are what people make when they're accessing that signal and it's like their soul is singing. When people sing with their mouth, they open their mouth, right? Like this, and that, that looks kind of funny sometimes, especially when they sing like high notes or something like that, right? But it's the same thing with a guitar. It just it just happens that with a guitar, you can make a lot more emotions and a lot more different pitches and, and things like that than you can with your voice. So there's a lot more different faces that you can make. But essentially, that's what you're doing. Your, your soul is singing through your guitar, and that's your face of accessing uh, that, that the signal of the music that is flowing through you. That's my answer for that. I'll say that when I play, uh, when I'm playing bass guitar and I click in, I lock in with the drummer and we're just really getting at it. My, I call it the stank face. We're just like, Oh yeah. Mm, oh yeah. Like, what's that smell? That's it. <laughs> it's the funk, right? Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. You know, what's funny about that. Whenever I like, I, I generally play a 10 string guitar. In fact, six string is harder for me to play now, but when I play the bass strings, whenever I, I lock into a good rhythm, like you were talking about with the bass, for some reason I look to the left, I'm always like, with the stank face, but I'm looking to the left. I don't know why. I'm just, that's how I can access it, you know? <laughs> that's, that's why. Nice. I love it. That was a great answer. All right. Okay. Next question. When should I play power chords versus bar chords? Okay. I'll give you the simple answer, and then I'll give you the, the slightly more detailed answer. Uh, it, w the question was when should I play power chords versus bar chords? Yeah. The short answer is this. I think it's four words when you want to, that's the short answer. So in order to know the difference, um, you know, know what you want, you gotta be able to play both types of chords and you, you gotta know what they both sound like. So the purpose is like, what sound do you want to hear? That's really the question is should, or that's really the answer is, uh, should you play bar chords or should you play power chords? Well, it depends, but it really depends on what sound do you want to hear? what's appropriate for the context. Let me give you a few examples of context. If you are just, if you don't even know bar chords yet, or if you, you can't quite get them yet, you will, but if you can't quite get them yet, starting with power chords is a lot easier. So in that case, you're gonna play power chords first, then you're gonna build your way up to your bar chords. Another thing is um, like, if you're playing in a genre that's like punk rock or something like that, a lot of times power chords um, are a lot simpler to play and not knocking anybody in particular, but there's a lot of guitar players out there that don't really know that much about playing guitar. They're good at what they do. You would be surprised how many of them are pros that you know, but they just don't really know what they're doing when it comes to guitar playing. So a lot of times they'll play simpler versions of things like power chords, for example, um, just to be able to get a particular sound. So like if I'm playing this power chord right here, I'm not barring, I'm just playing these strings here. 
So if I'm just doing this, sounds kind of punky, edgy, you know, that, that kind of thing. Uh, and if you want to get that sound, you can totally do that. So that's the third uh, option, I guess, is that what, what type of sound uh, are you going for? And there's one distinction that I want to make. This will bring up more questions, but it's not important for right now. Power chords are not major or minor. So that means they can fit into a major key or a minor key. What that means in layman's terms is that it will sound good no matter what the key is, or it can sound good or decent. It will fit, right? But a major chord or a minor chord, like a bar chord, for example, if you're playing, if you're supposed to be playing a major chord and you're pl you play a minor version of that same chord, it's not going to sound good. It's going to clash. So for example, if we're playing in the key of A major, it doesn't matter what the key is, I'm just picking one. If we're playing an A major chord, it has a bright, happy, you know, uh, nice sound, uplifting, positive. But if I make it a minor chord, it's going to sound negative, sad, melancholy. Definitely different, right? I can't, if, if your band is playing an A major chord and you're trying to play an A minor chord, it's going to clash. So one thing that you could do is just play a power chord if you don't know how to play a minor chord. Uh, or if you just want to hear the sound of a power chord, you can just do that. But I, I would say those are the general things to consider when you're going to play a, a bar chord versus a power chord. The most common examples or the most common situations I would say is if a guitar player isn't yet that great at bar chords, they're probably going to play more power chords. And if they are good at playing bar chords, you're probably going to be playing more bar chords because you can get those majors and minors and other types of chords. And you would only use uh, power chords specifically, like if in a specific situation, if you're trying to get the power chord sound, like a Metallica song or a punk song or, or something like that. Yeah, I, I can say that after I, the very first thing I learned after learning Brown Eyed Girl and Mary Had a Little Lamb on guitar was power was power chords and i played that there you go. that was like it for a very long time even started a punk rock band and listened to a lot of punk uh, and then yeah and then eventually it was like open chords and i think i i delayed learning bar chords as long as i possibly could i just yeah didn't want to play any of those and if i had to play something that was supposed to be a bar chord i cheated and just did a power chord just because i was there you go was lazy like that but that, I think for me, it was just pure laziness. I didn't want to step out and learn those things. So, but sure. yeah, def, I, ha, I definitely recommend learning it and it will make your hand stronger. You will be a more, I think, a ver more versatile player when you learn some bar chords. Oh, and totally. Start playing bar chords more often. Well, not, not to mention the different possibilities you have with the sounds. I mean, if I have one, if I have one, just an example, if I have one power chord, there's a couple of ways I can do a power chord. I can do it with two notes. Like this or I can do it with three notes I can add my pinky uh, right there so there's three notes those three notes sounds about the same a little bit bigger that's the only sound I can make with a power chord an A power chord but if I learn a bar chord here's an A major bar chord here's an A minor bar chord completely different sounds Here's an A major nine bar chord. Way different, right? Here's an A minor seven. Kind of bluesy, right? Totally different. So the the, the sonic possibilities, the color palettes, the, the, the moods that you have access to when you learn bar chords, endless. Definitely learn bar chords. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, nice, nice. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, so um, let's see. I, well, we're on the we're on the the topic of chords now, so let's ask this question now. How can someone learn to change chords faster? That is an amazing question. How can somebody learn to change chords faster? And probably just like most of my answers, what I'm going to say is is probably not what you're going to expect. Um, and I'm going to give you a specific example. Actually, there's going to be two things because there's so many different chords you can play. Right? There's so many different ranges of things that you can do. So I'm going to give you two answers. One is, it depends on what fingers you're thinking about. That's going to apply for most people when they play open chords. And then the second is training, and I'll get to that uh, in just a moment. The first one is thinking, chord thinking, right? 
if I'm playing open chords like a G chord, C chord, maybe a D chord, something like that, whoever is learning chords for the first time, or maybe they've played them for a little while, but they just kind of struggle with changing chords. They struggle with the timing. They struggle with getting to the next chord on time. Maybe their fingers don't cooperate. Their, their fingers don't do what their brain tells them to do. Or it's, it's a struggle. You have to build the chord one at a time. It makes your hand hurt. You can't get to the next chord on time, etc. There's one common reason that this happens. And like I said, we're going to talk about two things. One is chord thinking. Another one is the training aspect to it. So if on the open chords, for example, when I go from a G chord to let's say a C chord, most people use their index finger for everything in life. When I answer the phone, boop. Want to get some money at the ATM, boop, 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 boop. You know, the, we use our index finger for everything. Want to point at somebody, want to ask a question, we always use this finger. So most people think, well, to build the C chord, number one, they say, uh, they're going to say I'm building the chord, right? They're going to start with their index finger. Look where the rest of my fingers are. Is that anywhere close to being on the fretboard? No. So it's going to take time to move all my fingers. But what people do is they build, they start with their index finger. Then they go with their next finger like this. And then they go finally with their third finger. Now, if I'm going to do this, one, two, three, and I have to go from a G chord to do that, that's like four steps. I got to go from my G chord and I should immediately be going to a C chord, but I got to do this. One, two, three, four. Way too long. I'm already way behind the song. I'm already offbeat. I, I already can't do it, right? When you, when you think about building a chord, building something takes time. And most in music, you usually don't have a lot of time to change something. You want to be on the G chord, and then you want to be on the C chord. You don't want to have to build it, right? You want to just go there. So most people think, again, with their index finger. And the problem with, op with changing open chords is that most people think about changing leading with the wrong fingers. That causes them to build a chord. I'll say that again. When most people are trying to learn and change their open chords and get faster at doing it, the finger that they think about leading with causes them to have to build the chord. And that's what causes them to be late. And also, the, another thing to consider is this. Whatever you practice, you get better at. So the more I try to go from this G chord to the C chord by building it, guess what? The better I'm going to get at trying to build it and the more ingrained it's going to be to do it this way. And then by that time, it's a bad habit. I can't, you know, I can't not do it. It's really hard for me to change it. I'm always behind. My rhythm stinks. That's, that's part of the dangers of, of not having proper guidance and somebody to show you something like this, right? So what's a better solution? Well, changing the chord and building it one by one seems logical. And for playing the chord for the very first time, sure, just get your fingers on the strings, right? But realistically, humans... You know, our, our hands, our bodies are built in a certain way. So we need to leverage, we need to be ergonomic in the way that we decide to change things, the way that we decide to move around. So if I'm going to go from a G chord to a C chord, instead of leading with my index finger, this one, which causes these other fingers to go way out here, I'm actually going to think, when I, when I, when I uh, think about a C chord, I actually think about my ring finger. Why? Because when I go from G... To C, I lead with my ring finger. Now look at my hand. My hand is almost in a C shape already, just by leading with this one finger right here. And when I put that on the right note, the rest of my fingers are almost in place. And then I can just get used to setting them down at the same time. That's it. So you play a G. I think about leading with my ring finger in the case of a C chord. And then I set all the notes down at the same time. I set all my fingers down on the notes at the same time. And then I strum the chord. Then I'm on time. So that's part number one. Now, how do you get better at doing this? This is the training aspect. The training aspect is just simply doing it. And doing it slow enough to where it's easy to do. For example, um, I wish I could turn this around and play it left-handed. But uh, if I'm playing a G chord, I can wait as long as I want to move my hand to a C chord, leading with my ring finger, and then I can press the strings down, 
And then I can strum again. And then I go back to G chord. And then I lead with my ring finger again. I'm thinking about my ring finger. My hand automatically goes to the C shape. I press the notes down. Now I play it. Now, how do you train on that? Well, first you just get used to it. And then second, you speed it up a little bit. And you just go a little faster. And you do it until you can do it well. And then you speed it up a little more. And then you do it until you can do it well. Then you speed it up a little more. You do it until you can do it well. And then you can start adding in different rhythms, different things like that, which will just further ingrain uh, in your mind and in your hand the connection here of what is a C chord shape. When I think C, boom, my hand automatically does that. And yours will too when you do it this way. So anyway, I know we talked about specifically open chords with this, but these concepts apply to any chord that you're possibly playing. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Awesome. I think uh, I think now is a really good time to recommend that if you guys are watching this live and you're appreciating some of this, I, I would love for you guys hit the like button. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe and the bell notification because we're going to be actually doing these Q&A calls a lot more often. And we'd love for you to hop on right when we go live and you can ask a question or one of those things. But yeah, definitely hit the subscribe button. We're posting tons of new content. And if you're watching on Facebook, hit the share button, share it to your, your friends. And I'm sure there's some guitar players that can, that would love to jump in a breakthrough guitar and get some really cool value out of this. So I appreciate that guys. Uh, Doug Faria says that works so much better that way. Thanks. I appreciate you, Doug. Awesome. Rock, man. That's awesome. Yeah. And you're right, Doug, it does work so much better. <laughs> also guys if you have other questions um you know doug if you have a question anybody else if you have a question just post them in the comments because we'll scan through the comments and maybe we'll answer your question on the next one so if you have any questions just let us know rock and roll okay cool let's jump into some more questions the next one i have is uh the one i have here is should i learn to play an acoustic or electric guitar uh this is probably from a new guitar player that is undecided of which which way they should mm -hmm. go yeah. So again, I mean, this is another one of those questions where it depends. Should you, this is an age old question, right? Should you play an electric guitar or should you play an acoustic guitar? So I think there's a few myths around this, um, but then I'm also going to give you some guidance as well. My personal opinion is that it, it is a myth of whether, whether you should do something uh, or, over the other. A lot of people say, I think it's kind of an old wives tale basically that they say, well, if you learn on an acoustic first, it's going to make everything else easier. Well, not necessarily, because it depends on what kind of acoustic you learn, whether it makes you quit or not, because it's not set up properly, whether it sounds good or not, whether you it can make you quit, right? So I don't, I don't know about that. Um, and also, it, it depends on mainly what do you want to do? Like, what, what type of guitar do you want to play? Do you want to play an acoustic? Play an acoustic. Do you want to play an electric guitar? Play an electric guitar. It doesn't matter. You're going to find over time that when you when you start to get better and your hands start to get used to a fretboard etc it's going to cause you to play a certain way and then when you change the guitar your hand your fingers your playing style is going to adapt to that guitar so really it, it really in my honest opinion it doesn't matter where you start you can make the argument if we isolate all of this stuff in a vacuum and we say there's a guitar in a vacuum and there's an only guitar player that exists in the world and they're going to learn bar chords. And if they just do bar chords on an acoustic, then it'll be a lot easier on an electric. Well, yeah, probably will be. Why? Because the, the acoustic strings in general, most of the time, are thicker than strings on an electric guitar. And they're just harder to press down. So naturally, your hand is going to have to get stronger in order to play a bar chord on an acoustic guitar, for the most part, versus playing it on an electric guitar, where it will feel easier. But again, that's all in a vacuum. And playing guitar is not in a vacuum. There's so much more that you want to do on guitar than just playing one chord. So those little arguments don't, it, it doesn't matter in the long run. It's it, depending on what you want to do with your guitar and your guitar playing. Um, I would say certain types of guitars are more suited to whatever goals that you have. I, I would be thinking in that way. So again, the question is, the answer to the first question which is a question is, what do you want to do on the guitar? Do you want to do like a bunch of finger picking and, and like sounding pretty and things like that? Well, acoustic guitar is generally the way that that's done. So maybe you want to play an acoustic. Do you want to sit around a campfire and, and play a bunch of songs and strum and you know sing or something like that? Acoustic guitar is more conducive to doing that. On the other hand, 
if you want to do a bunch of bending or if you want to play really loud or if you want to play with distortion or pedals or delay or chorus or play really fast you can do that on an acoustic guitar but it's just easier and there's more range and more possibility on an electric guitar so again the question is should you start with an acoustic or should you start with an electric and in my opinion the answer is it depends on what you want to do decide what you want to do go in that direction you're going to be happier overall if you follow what you're what you're passionate about what you want to do don't just do something because you think you should or because somebody said you should do this do what you want to do make sure you have the right guidance but go in the direction that you want to go in you'll be a lot happier and have a lot more fun with your playing yeah, I could see an issue with somebody who maybe they only listens to heavy metal or hard rock or something and they want to pick up an acoustic. Yeah. It might it might not be as enjoyable when you get out because when you start playing because the sounds are very different. And if you don't have yeah. a distortion pedal, maybe some effects or something that it just you might lose interest a little quicker. But who knows? Exactly. I, I know uh, Bon Jovi, when R Richie Sambora would sit down and they'd write songs, he would only play an acoustic guitar because... He, he felt that uh, John would be able to pull out better melodies from this, the chords he was hmm. playing because it was on an acoustic guitar. So I could see songwriting an acoustic guitar being... A, if For you, sure. If you want to be a songwriter or a singer, that's probably a good way to start, so yeah. especially if you don't have a band to play with. So Yeah, super common thing. Yeah, just some thoughts. Okay, so um, this is a good question. You, you, probably, you probably answer this one in your sleep. Why do guitar <laughs> players have so many guitars in their collection? Oh, man. Why do guitar players have so many guitars? Well, do you want the short answer first or the long answer first? Let's go with the, let's go with the short answer first. <laughs> the short answer is that it's an addiction. That's the okay. short answer. Okay. So no, not, not to offend anybody, but why do people keep buying cigarettes? Because it's an addiction. Same thing about guitars. Guitar players, literally every single guitar player <laughs> that I know has the same issue or same passion. Let's call it a passion, right? Guitars are just fun to look at. Like mm. it's nice to look at. It makes you want to pick it up. Makes you want to play it. Makes you want to have it. Makes you want to look at it in the case in your room. Makes you want to look at it on the wall. Makes you want to just pick it up. Even if you can't really play it. So what? It, it's like, there's something about it. It's like art, right? It's kind of like art. Why do people, um, why do people go to the store and buy a, a few pieces of plywood with some canvas on it where somebody just put a bunch of oil and acrylic on, on a canvas. It doesn't do anything, right? It just sits there. But whoever owns it, whoever bought it, it gives them a lot of joy. It gives them a lot of pleasure, I, I would assume, to look at that art. And in, in a sense, guitar is the same thing. It's in a lot of ways, it's art, especially if you look at custom guitars, custom built guitars. There's some amazing, super incredible guitars out there. And I would, you know, I used to build my own guitars as well. And um, I went, I got super into that kind of stuff. So again, the short answer is because it's, it's like art, right? It's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's exciting. And it just gives guitar players pleasure to, to have different guitars. Now, the more, that's the real reason, <laughs> but the, the more uh, logical reason that we all tell ourselves is because we need different types of sounds like, and there's a lot of truth to that, but like an acoustic guitar, for example, versus an electric guitar, you're going to be able to do a lot of different things on an acoustic guitar that you can't do on an electric, you know, any other way around. So having an acoustic allows you to do certain things. Having an electric allows you to do certain other things. Um, different electric guitars, for example, a lot of them have different pickups. They have different woods, different uh, scale lengths, which means how long the strings are. And they sound different. It's just a bunch of it's different sounds. So you may use different sounds for different reasons. And an easy way to think about this is cars. So there's a lot of different types of cars. If you go drive on the highway, there's a ton of different types of cars out there. Why? Well, there's two reasons. One is for style. People like what they like. Kind of the same thing as art, right? Same thing as guitars. Like if you want a blue car, I want a green car. Some Somebody else wants a yellow car. Somebody wants an SUV. Somebody wants you know, another person wants a sports car. It's that's a matter of opinion or style. Then there's a the, the part of functionality, which is exactly the same as guitars. You have different cars for different functions or different purposes. So a dump truck, for example, it's going to carry big, heavy loads. An SUV might be to take the kids to soccer practice or to put your new dresser in the back of your car so it can fit in your car. You don't have to get a truck. 
A pickup truck might be for working on a job site or putting lumber in the back or hauling dirt or something like that. And then, of course, a sports car might be just to go fast, to, to drive around a track. So there's all these different functions, right? But the answer uh, you know, to why do guitar players have so many guitars, in my opinion, it's two reasons. One is because it's enjoyable. Two, because there's different purposes. There's different functions that you can get with each one of the different guitars. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, all right. Uh, we have one last question. Are you ready for it, Jonathan? I'm ready for it. Hey, again, thank you guys so much for hopping on this call. For the, those of you who have been on this long, uh, again, thanks for hitting the like button and all that good stuff. And the last question is, how should I care for my guitar? So should they keep it in a case, get it on a stand, hang it on a wall because it's a piece of art? Should they clean it? All, all that good stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, how should you take care of your guitar? In general... It's going to come down to, I think, a couple of main things. Um, and those are paying attention to the temperature and the humidity and then keeping it clean. So what I mean is for any guitar, you don't want to leave it outside in the sun and you don't want to leave it in the rain, right? You want to be careful of what type of environment you put a guitar into, especially like a storage unit without AC without air conditioning or something can get really hot. Maybe if you're in a humid area like Florida, it can get really, really humid in there. And with temperature and humidity changes, your guitars are made out of wood. So the, the wood on your guitars expands and contracts. And depending on how the grain looks on your guitar, it can actually make your guitar bend and warp and your neck can even twist so it's unplayable. Another thing that can happen is the frets, uh, let's say it gets too cold, you leave your guitar in a cold place, the wood can actually shrink enough to where you can feel the edges of the frets sticking out from the neck. And if you try to slide, it hurts, right? You're gonna cut your finger by doing that. So I'd say the first thing is be very uh, attentive to the temperature and the humidity, the environment that your guitar is in. If you have your guitar in a reasonably cool, dry place, like inside where a place you know that, that's not wet or humid, that's somewhere around room temperature, you're gonna be fine. The second thing is just keeping it clean in general. So some people's hands sweat a lot more than others. Um, some people never change their strings. There's a lot of things that you can that, that can get dirt like all around your frets. Your your strings can turn black because you know there's a bunch of dirt on them or they start rusting or something like that. You can get a bunch of dust um, and dirt here in the bridge or in your pickups or in your 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 knobs or anything like that. And eventually that can cause some issues, maybe some electrical issues, maybe some of the saddles, you know, on your bridge might not function as well, something like that. Maybe a tuner won't work quite as well. Actually, my tuners are down here, but um, something like that, it can, it can hurt the functionality of the guitar. And then finally, well, with the cleanliness part, I would say for the wood as well. Like if you if you sweat a lot, maybe you play outside a lot or so, for some reason, and you're, maybe your arm sweats, and you're, you're going to probably wear some paint off or it's going to start to get grungy here a little bit. If you really want to take care of your guitar, when you, when you stop playing it, uh, get a cloth and wipe it off. Wipe off wherever you were playing. Wipe the strings. Um, in fact, my dad always used to call it wiping the strings down. Make sure you wipe the strings down when, you, when you're done playing before you put it back in the case. And that's another thing. I mean, if you put your guitar in the case, more often than not, it's gonna be more protected than if it was out of the case. If it was out of the case, you might knock it over, dog might chew on it, you never know. Somebody might spill something on it. If it's in the case, it's definitely gonna be more protected than if it was out of the case. However, most people put their guitar in the case and leave it in the case and the old saying, out of sight, out of mind, if you don't see your guitar, especially if you put it in the closet under the bed, chances are it's going to collect dust before you think about it again. So if you want to play your guitar more, I suggest leaving it out on a stand. But, you know, if it's in a cool, dry area, it's going to be fine. Yeah, I, um, I, I get some lemon oil sometimes. And what I'll do is when I'm changing my strings, I'll uh, treat the, the uh, frets because, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, like you said, if it's out in the sun a lot, it starts to dry out those frets and uh, can wear it down a lot quicker. I'm, I remember my brother actually bought this really beautiful 
marble colored bass guitar and the guy that he bought it off of kept it in a corner leaned up against the wall and there is nothing we could do to straighten out that neck that some guys recommend sticking in the steam room and steaming it and then bending it back into place and it was sad because it was a really beautiful guitar but it was hard to play because of just the frets the the neck was so warped it was so concave it was it was wild so Mm -hmm. well there you go everybody thank you so much for hopping on this q a live if you guys have some questions, maybe you send them in, leave them in a comment somewhere. We'll check them out for the next uh, YouTube uh, Break the Guitar Q&A Live. Uh, love you guys. Make sure you hit the like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss another live video with Jonathan and Brock and whoever might else might show up. So, all right, guys. Peace. Cool. Appreciate it, guys. See you all later.